I recently decided to try out the Valheim public test server so I could enjoy some delicious new content and maybe add my take on things as they go through testing and development. So let's test out the biggest new feature, Hilder's Request, and see how it is. Is it a huge challenge for someone who has already killed all the bosses in the game? Or is it just kind of easy? Are the rewards worth it? Let's find out together. It took me quite a while to find Hilder, even though I was allowing myself to kind of fly around and get there, but here we are. We're meeting Hilder for the first time, and I think this is going to be pretty cool. I awkwardly approach from the back of Hilder's establishment, and it seems like my presence doesn't scare Hilder. She seems genuinely excited to see me and eager for my assistance. It was the previous message I'm referring to. I'd go get my things back myself, but I'm not willing to risk losing anything else. Help a girl out. I don't know why I chose that voice, it just seemed right. But that is indeed Hilder's request. I don't really see anything I want to buy right now, but I do like the barber kit. Probably going to come back for that later. But uh, yeah, let's grab the locations right there and we will go for a trip. At first I found it difficult to actually find what I was looking for. I know it marked a bunch of positions on the map, but I couldn't find anything. But eventually I stumbled across the first location, a smoldering tomb. So I say goodbye and go about my merry way. But not before saying hello and petting the lovely locks over here. Oh, you guys are just wonderful. And yeah, I guess I did explore Hilder's area over here. It seems pretty barren because we gotta get her stuff back. But uh, it's pretty cool. I like the design. A lot, of, a lot of nice booths here. And this cart over here, it's pretty lovely. I, I do like the design of this. Nice and red. Kind of looks uh, cartoony, but not cartoony at the same time. I don't know. Pretty cool. Eventually, I did make it to our first destination. The Smoldering Tomb. And I brought the Frostner with me because I know we're going to find a whole lot of skeletons in here. So uh, I think it's the appropriate weapon. It's not too overpowered, but I mean, it's, it's going to be overpowered. But it's good enough. And I brought a Diverger Lantern as well because it's a tomb and it's gonna be dark so let's explore this thing and we've got our first one star skeleton frosty handles it just fine what we expect it's an overpowered hammer i mostly brought it because i really i kind of know what to expect but i also kind of don't know what to expect when it comes to these mini bosses and yeah i'm gonna skip around a little bit because not every single one of these corners was eventful so we're gonna we're gonna move on and skip around to some cool parts I turn this corner right here, open this door, and you guessed it, we found some skeletons. But that archer actually staggered me because I'm not carrying my shield right now. I'm using the lantern because we need we need good aesthetics. We need to be able to see what's going on in here. And yeah, it was it's still I don't know, I don't know how it staggered me. It just it just worked. But we're still alive and I approach this coffin right here and a skeleton just pops out. That was pretty cool. I do like that little additive in this. Um, yeah, we got some more skeletons, and I'm not seeing anything less than a one-star. Uh, little chest right here, but this skeleton with a shield and a sword, it just needs to become bones. No longer an animated skeleton. Yeah, lots of little treasures in these boxes. Another ancient coffin right here. I just think this is such a cool little addition. I think that these popping out and just opening up and having a skeleton pop out, pretty cool idea. But now this door right here opens up to the boss, the little mini boss right here. And her name is Brenna and she is aggressive and kind of on fire. <laughs> Not kind of on fire, definitely on fire. And I think this is a perfect weapon to handle flames. I know Frost doesn't really cancel out flames in this game, but it just makes sense in my mind. So stuck in this little corridor right here, I do just use a whole bunch of secondary attacks and without too much effort, Brenna is down. And we grab Hilder's brass chest and the Brenna trophy, her flaming skull. So we keep walking around a little bit. We killed a couple more skeletons and we exit the tomb. I made my way back to Hilder and I gave her back her chest. Greetings, Viking. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, you found it. Now check out my wares. A whole bunch of cool stuff started popping up and now we have access to a bunch more clothing items in her store. Pretty cool, but nothing too fancy just yet. So we move on and we make it to the mountains, to a frost cave, but it's not an ordinary frost cave. It is a Howling Cavern. Just look at this. It is a little different. It's nice. Howling Cavern, here we go. 
Break this little ice door right here, and we're moving through. And we brought the silver sword along because I knew we were gonna come across a whole bunch of olves, which are basically like werewolf kind of monsters. And these these bats, come on, get out of here. They're just, they're one of the most squirrely and most annoying creatures in the entire game. Maybe even worse than ticks because they just, they fly and they're really, really difficult to hit. So jump slash it's it's good enough but yeah the silver sword against olves i i figured kind of like the witcher it's a silver sword and it's going to be more effective i thought they were weak to spirit damage turns out they're not they're weak to poison damage but the silver sword still does fantastic work to these guys and i still feel like they're weak to it <laughs> it works just fine it's at least a thing in my head cannon but look at that we've got a two star olf but <laughs> One little poke right in the face, and it's down. It was no trouble, even though I kind of expected it to be. These guys are proving to be no problem whatsoever. And of course, this is a mountain, so I'm expected to kind of have mountain tier items. But look at all these olves. These are just, ah, they stand no chance against our silver sword. But hey, look, we found the boss. I think the best pronunciation I can come up with is Giraffa, but she is no slouch. She produces a whole lot of frost damage, and yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a fun battle right here, because look at that, AoE kind of uh, area of attack damage, and just trying to shoot me with icicles, come on, I, I, like, I like icicles, or I guess popsicles, flavored popsicles, come on, why are you shooting those at me, I like those, <laughs> brings me back to my childhood. Uh, you know the, those ones that would actually just like cut your cut the exterior of your mouth Yeah, those were delicious, but also not delicious. Why am I talking about this this boss Girafa? She's she's fantastic and while I am OP because I didn't bring mountain tier gear except for the silver sword It's still a fun fight and I definitely feel like I'm channeling Geralt of Rivia from the Witcher And this silver sword is doing such great work on this monster this mini boss Girafa She stands no chance and my shield Shield is able to stagger her nicely, but she's definitely not done putting up a fight. She shoots some more icicles at me, we're stabbing, we're slashing, and we're trying to dodge of this, this AoE attack as much as possible. Not that it really matters, but a couple more slashes right here, and Girafa is down. And I'm able to grab her head and Hilder's silver chest. Pretty appropriate, but you know, a couple more olves in here, and I just, you know, we're clear in the area. It's a lot of fun. We've we've got a whole lot of enemies to kill, and look at all of these right here. I am I am definitely a witcher at this point. Come on. Honorary Witcher status achieved. But we're back at Hilder's encampment right here, and we give her the chest. That one must have been a challenge, but you won't regret it. Bunch of really satisfying noises, and now she has a lot more stuff available in her store. I'm sure I've got something that'll tickle your fancy. All right, Hilder. Sure. But we're moving on. We've made it to the next place. Our next destination, this giant tower in the middle of the plains. It is indeed a fantastic giant tower. Let's take out this random sentry right there. It is a sealed tower. And there's no way in from the bottom. We have to slowly build our way to the top. So that's exactly what I get going with. I bring out these two by two wood floors and I just make myself some platforms because they can attach just fine to the outside of this building. So, you know, we're skipping ahead a little bit and eventually I do have just a random encounter with this, with this, <laughs> this goblin right here. What are you doing? Just throwing spears at me randomly. Come on, I have a crossbow. Let's see what it can do. Yeah, nothing. Because I kind of miss, I hit the pole right there, even though I was aiming for the fueling. Are you kidding me? I try to jump to get a little closer. I fall off and I, move, I lose half of my progress. So I slowly build my way up. And yeah, it's just, it's a little bit squirrely. It's a little bit difficult, but eventually I do make my way to this little outcropping right here. And so I kill this guy right here. And I, I know I could have walked in through here, but I don't know why. I just, I decided to go to the very top. I know the very top down is probably the best overall experience, so eventually I made my way to the very top. And a whole bunch of fuelings are here to greet me. I break out Le Crom, one of my favorite weapons in the game, and I just start slashing. But 
These few links are just, they can actually handle themselves just fine. It seems like they were ready for me. There are traps up here. I'm at 38 health and yeah, I need to take a potion. So yeah, they still pummel away at me. They still just absolutely slaughter me kind of. I pop a bone mask because it just makes sense at the time. I, I think it's probably not the best choice because maybe I should have waited for the mini boss, but I didn't want to die up here. I just, I felt like it was the right time to do this. But with another slash, the final fueling is down and we survived. Just barely, but we're alive. And now we can slowly make our way down this spiral staircase to enter the sealed tower. But we've got a chest right here. Look at that, a couple bits of gold. And you can kill these iron gates by just using your sword, pretty easy. That little trap right there almost got me. I actually couldn't see it because it was kind of hidden right there. I've watched a few videos on people doing this and they kind of just walk around those so I didn't actually know what they were, but they are indeed very dangerous traps. So almost hit one right there. Nope, I cannot take them out. I don't know how you do it, maybe a sledge, but you gotta just kind of jump over them. Let's kill this iron gate and we're making our way down, making our way downtown. Walking fast, faces pass, I am indeed homebound. Well, not yet. We're killing fuelings, we're killing these shamans, and we've got the Himenoffel out, and man, this is just the perfect area for at gears because they have a long reach, they poke quite nicely, they're not gonna lose a lot of their damage by hitting the walls. It's, it's just the perfect weapon for this opportunity. I think it's the right way to go. So, we're killing Shaman, we're killing Fuelings, it's just a lovely time. We're spinning, yeah, it's a, it's just a fun thing. It's a fun experience, and, you know, after the chaos of above us, above the top of the tower, this is, it's nice. I'm able to pretty effortlessly take these guys out and make my way to the bottom. Oh baby, here we go. We've got our next mini boss. I pop a lingering stamina mead. It just kind of makes sense for me. And look at that. It is Zill and Thunger. Definitely, I think, one of the coolest additions to the game. We've got a fueling berserker being ridden by a, a shaman. Not just an ordinary shaman. It's Zill. Probably like a, a shaman executive, we'll say. I don't know. The right words aren't coming to me. But it's definitely no ordinary shaman. And it's definitely no ordinary berserker. So I take out the Mistwalker with the carapace shield and it does end up staggering this guy so not a big deal i think this is going to be perfectly fine because i have been playing around fighting other fueling berserkers and while this is not the easiest battle in the world i have some open space so i should be okay and no you will not put a shield on this guy i will take this shield down as soon as i possibly can come on will you stop will you stop all right stagger you Boom, shield is down, let's do some slashing. This is just a, it's a great fight, and obviously since this is a plains tier fight, it's gonna be much more difficult because this is only one under Mistlands tier, and yeah, I probably should have blocked a little bit more because I have a shield. So yeah, I'm at 66 health. I cower a little bit in the stairs right here and I let my health come back. I am, yeah, didn't take a potion right there, but I really thought about it. I'm just like, all right, we're fine. We gain a little health back. We can go back into this battle. We can totally handle this. I don't need to cower in the stairs. And no, you will not get that shield on. What did I tell you earlier? <laughs> Able to block a bunch of his blows. I get some stabs in myself. Nice little forward roll right there. Another stab, and it just, it rages. I need to gain some stamina back. I need to gain some health back. But, you know, I can I can manage. I'm, out, I'm doing okay. Forward roll, it doesn't go well. I am low health. I have 32 health, 45. Yeah, I take I take the, the potion. It's definitely necessary at this point. But I need to start learning to actually block more often. So that's what I do. I remember, I am holding a shield and with another swipe, Thunger is down, and Zill is now alone on the ground. We can handle this just fine. He's just a tiny little, you know, jerk shaman who just happens to have a little more health, right? This is gonna be perfectly fine. I can dodge these, and if I had stamina, maybe I'd be able to put some more work into this guy. But I, I kind of get overconfident right here. It's good. Swords level 42, it's not too bad. We're fine, we're fine. <laughs> we may be on fire, but we're fine. Yeah, I, I did take two stamina food 
foods here, and yet I'm still out of stamina because Zunger took a lot of stamina to actually kill. But we're on fire. We're taking damage. I probably should have brought some delicious fire meads. I get overconfident. I take out the Krom and I cower. And I spend some good amounts of time up here because I need to regain my health. And I regain it. We're back at it. And I just start slashing. Another slash and Zill is down. We are now the proud owner of Hilder's bronze chest, but I'm carrying too much, so I can't grab it. Come on, get out of here. Just all this extra stuff that we really don't need right now. So Hilder's bronze chest, and so I start to exit. But I have a thought. I changed my mind to the very top of these stairs right here because, you know, I think maybe I missed something, and I honestly didn't know. I just had the, the random thought that maybe I did miss something, and around this corner, we do have a little outcropping with some chests, and you've got an egg right here, you've got a whole bunch of good stuff that's just, you know, great, great items to add to the game, but let's return to Hilder. Well, well, look what the neck drag did. Yeah, yeah, here you go. I didn't think you could manage that one. Color me impressed. Some satisfying sounds and Hilder's chests are all here. We've completed this quest and look at that. Hilder is still a little bit bitter about all the stuff that was stolen, but hey look, we can sell a bunch of stuff and we have enough to buy the barber kit. So that's exactly what I do. That's gonna be fun. Thank you very much, Hilder. I don't really want any of the rest of the stuff, so I kinda just go back to the arena and I build a little barber station. Look at that. So I, I change my hairstyle up a little bit, see what we can find, look through all the selections. Yeah, definitely lots of choices. And I kinda do settle on this. Long hair looks pretty good. I displayed all the new trophies in my little space right here that I have on the outside of the arena, and they just look really good. The flaming skull, the wolf, the, the big old goblin brute right here. Yeah, just a little bit low lighting, sorry. And of course, <laughs> the, the jerk shaman. So what do I think about Hilder's request, or Hilder's quest, however you want to call it? Well, I think the new mini-bosses are awesome. I loved fighting enemies that are a bit more difficult than normal mobs, and I'm always excited to test out new features like this. I will say, however, transporting the chests over large bodies of water or vast mountain ranges or stuff, it's going to be a huge hassle. And the rewards aren't really worth it. I know, they're pretty cool, but they're not that great. I think we need either more items that will bring legitimate benefits, or the full clothing sets should come with some sort of specific bonuses. Or give me a special weapon or armor set. <laughs> I think that would be an awesome idea. I'm always down for new weapons. Hilder's Quest is worth it for the experience, but definitely not for the rewards. Or at least that's how I feel. Let me know how you feel in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you feel like it, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.